This is USBI News, your Virgin Islands connection. Hi everyone, thank you for joining us today for USBI News. I'm Emily Matson. We begin with the very latest on a deadly helicopter crash Monday afternoon in St. Thomas. It happened around 3.15 in the afternoon. Four people were on board the helicopter. Unfortunately, none survived the crash. It is a tragedy that has left the community in mourning. Our Ali Bourne-Vanek has the very latest on the investigation and an eyewitness account. It's been a gut-wrenching last 24 hours as dozens of rescue workers in St. Thomas responded to a helicopter crash at Botany Bay. VI Fire Services reports there were four passengers and sadly no survivors. Being in a small community, trust me, does not make this easy at all. Um, especially this situation was very hard on everyone. But, you know, as hard as it may be sometimes as first responders, all the first responders on scene focused and, and dug in and did what we can do to bring closure to this situation, especially for the family of the victims. It's difficult because it's people we know, you know, it's locals. And from my perspective, being in emergency medical services for about 26 years, this is my first time having to deal with a, a helicopter accident. So for me, it's, it's rough, you know, so I could imagine the impact on other residents, you know, as well. This video of smoke seen here from the crash was taken by an eyewitness. She took it shortly after calling 911 at about 317. We saw the helicopter um, hovering around this area. It wasn't just, you know, passing through the area. It was hovering around this area. Um, and I was trying to send some audio messages on the phone, and so I stopped because the helicopter was making a lot of noise and very close. So when I turned and I looked at the helicopter, all of a sudden I heard it sort of slow down, like mm -hmm. and then it just kind of went belly up and, and went to the ground. And the panic in that moment, uh, you know, it's like your heart must have just dropped. Yes, um, especially because I was with my three-year-old. I don't think he really understood what was going on. I, I got really scared and um, as soon as I could like react, I, I called 911. Uh, I believe I made the call at 317. Emergency respondents report that the crash happened just over this hill here in the area of Botany Bay with difficult terrain, a lot of bush to get through, making recovery efforts, quote, dangerous. Now with efforts wrapping up, federal agencies like the FAA will move in and continue to investigate with the Virgin Islands community and many beyond our waters mourning those who were lost. It's not, it's not easy. It's never going to be easy. And even last night I had, you know, difficulty sleeping, but, you know, it's part of the job and that's what we are, we are trained to do, but it's never easy, you know. It's not confirmed by officials at this time who were the victims in the crash, but in such a small, tight-knit community, many people are sharing tributes on social media, heartfelt words from a church family, and posts from friends and loved ones. This heartbreaking news also began making national headlines with a tribute from country music's Kenny Chesney, sharing his sadness over losing his longtime friend. First, uh, I really want to extend my condolences both on behalf of Governor Albert Bryan Jr. and myself uh, to the families who lost uh, their loved ones in this tragic event. And so I just wanted to come down and to extend to those families the condolences of this community. Um, it is a great loss and we will be here for you in whatever ways we can provide assistance and in just helping to, to see you through this really um, horrendous event. In St. Thomas, Ali Bornvenek, USVI News. Such a tragedy and as Ali mentioned, country musician Kenny Chesney said his friend Maria Rodriguez was among the victims in the crash. We learned she was piloting the helicopter. This according to a post on his Facebook page. He posted these lovely pictures with a heartfelt message of loss and gratefulness to have known Rodriguez. Chesney said he had flown with Maria for more than 15 years and she was a huge part of his island life. He wrote in the post that she was a dear friend to him in the entire island community. From these pictures, you can tell she was a fun spirited and lovely lady. Clearly, Maria Rodriguez will be sorely missed by many. And Ali Bornvenek, of course, is on the ground there in St. Thomas and will be continuing to follow this story as it develops here on USVI News.
In other news today, the Virgin Islands continues to lead the way in tackling the coronavirus. In fact, we learned today the territory has the third lowest case count in the nation. The latest results show there are currently 105 active cases. St. Thomas is seeing the most with 75 people currently testing positive, 25 in St. Croix and 5 in St. John. And pop-up testing sites continue this week in the territory in St. Croix. There's free testing next Tuesday, the 23rd from 10 o'clock in the morning until 1 p.m. at the Canagata Recreation Center parking lot. Also this Thursday, the 18th in St. Croix and next Thursday, the 25th from 1030 until 130 at Butto Park and there's free pop up testing there in St. Thomas. Testing will be Thursday, February 18th at the University of the Virgin Islands from 1 to 3. And as you see on your screen there in St. John, testing is this Wednesday, the 17th from 1:30 to 440 at VIPA Gravel Yard. And we have even better news today. The VI Health Department has now moved into phase 1C of vaccinations throughout the territory. The COVID-19 vaccines are our strongest weapon against the virus. 31 provider sites are currently reporting vaccine administration, and so far we have administered 11,079 first doses and 4,222 second doses, or 15,301 total doses administered. As of today, we have advanced to Phase 1C of the phase-based vaccination plan. Phase 1C includes individuals who work in water and waste management, food services, shelters, housing, finance, information technology and communications, energy, legal, and media, with a continuation of those not vaccinated in phases 1A and 1B. To find out if you are eligible, please visit COVID19USVI.com forward slash vaccines. To schedule your first dose, please call 340-777-8227. Thank you. Again, that hotline number to call to schedule an appointment with a provider to get the COVID vaccine is 340-777-VAX or 8227. That hotline is staffed Monday through Friday, as she mentioned, 830 in the morning until 3 p.m. You can also visit vatima.vi.gov to schedule an appointment online to get your vaccine. Government officials in Puerto Rico in the meantime have been insisting schools reopen for quite some time now. And the time has finally come. Teachers and students in Puerto Rico are set to return to the classroom this March. And as our Elena Quinones reports, the public's reaction to the schools finally reopening their doors is mostly positive. Take a listen. Governor Pedro Perluisi has been presenting the idea of reopening the schools on the island even before he got elected. Back then, it seemed like a goal very far away to being reached. But today, it's already scheduled for March. How do people actually feel about it? Um, I think it's okay. Like we've, Our quarantine has been very, very long, and students need teachers, need presential classes to actually learn stuff. I think they should definitely wait. I think the percentage of people that are vaccinated at this point, it's still very low. Therefore, they should wait a little bit more so they can vaccinate every teacher and everyone's just ready for the reopening of the schools. Children have been a controversial topic during this pandemic because of the fact that none of the vaccines approved for use of emergency included them. Puerto Rico began vaccinating teachers this past month, but since there's been a delay in the process, the Education Department clarified that it is not a requirement for them to be vaccinated to go to campus. I think they must wait. They must wait not only to vaccinate all the teachers, but also to be sure that the children are safe. I think that's very important um, and the teachers are very important too. But I think it is not time. And if we have waited so long, waiting two months uh, more, it's not, I think it's no different. I think it's a very good decision. I believe the children need to interact with other children. But at the same time, it's a very difficult decision for the parents to not to be, you know, a little bit hesitant about letting their children come back to school. Well, I think the, they can reopen the, the school. It's time to get to the normal and to um, the, the student um, go to the school and 
restart the, the normal life. Meanwhile, the CDC already published a guide that every school who wants to reopen will need to follow. Reporting from San Juan, Puerto Rico, Alanis Quiñones. In other news tonight, Oprah Winfrey is set to sit down with Prince Harry and Meghan Markle for an exclusive conversation. CBS announced Oprah with Meghan and Harry, a CBS primetime special. The wide-ranging interview will cover life as a royal, marriage, their move to the U.S., and the family's future. The primetime special airs Sunday, March 7th on CBS.